Hey guys, so I thought I'd provide an update to my branded Dogmatica Invoked Eldritch list, which I think has a really good spot in this current format. And I actually brought this list to Toronto Regionals a week ago, and I started off strong at 3-0, but ultimately I did end up collapsing and finished 5-3. But that being said, 2-3 to three losses are uh, very winnable. One of them was actually due to time, which I really would have had it otherwise. And so the whole time I felt that the deck held up very well against Sprite or Tier Limits. And so I thought I'd provide an updated list in case you're interested in playing it. And so yeah, let's just get right into it. Alright, so starting with the main deck, let's start with the Invocation package, which of course we're going to start with the Triple Alistair uh, Double Invocation, of course the 3 Meltdown, and plus the 1 Terraforming. This is probably as standard as it gets, and I don't think this ratio is really ever any different in any other Invoked variant. And then the next part is the Dogmatica part, which is I'm running personally 2 Ecclesia, 1 Fleur, uh, the 2 Nadir Servant, and the 1 Punishment. So this one, it sometimes varies, I find, uh, in like Dogmatica, Eldritch, whatever kind of Eldritch list. They only, I think, usually play just one Ecclesia. I like two, you know, one gets can get the Punishment, the other can get the Fleur. And also, uh, I think most people probably don't play Maximus at this point, <laughs> ever since the Branded stuff came out. I mean, essentially, if you resolve Maximus and they're playing Branded, like, you're probably gonna lose, because you're just gonna give your opponent, like, plus two. So this is all that I play. Next is the LH part, which again, this ratio has also not changed since my last profile. So we're going to do uh, two Golden Lords, uh, the two Eldens, and then the Traps, uh, again, similar ratio as any other LH profile, which is the three Sanguine, uh, three Conquistador, and the one Wakero. And so I think the only thing that might kind of stand out is usually people probably play three of this, or sometimes, honestly, they don't even play this at all. I really like this card, uh, especially now that we're playing with the branded variant. Like, you could add, you know, an LH card that you can just discard off the Lubellion so that you don't actually really neg that much because, you know, either of these can just uh, banish and just set the other one so that it works out. And also, sometimes, let's say you have Alistair, you could always add a Golden Lord so that when you use Invocation, instead of banishing something like the Magistus Link, you can just uh, discard this from your hand to the graveyard, uh, and then banish the Alistair as well as part of the fusion, and so that this goes into the graveyard. Uh, next is the actual branded package, which is very small in this list. It's just essentially just the Fallen of Valdas, the Shadal Beast, so that we summon out the window, and then the branded fusion. So, you know, nowadays, because of tier limits, a lot of decks are uh, bringing out Winda, so that's kind of unfortunate, because that just means you know, a lot of the decks are probably main decking Dark Ruler, which means for us, where, you know, we were sort of bringing out Winda before all that, um, it becomes less powerful with Dark Ruler. But at the same time, for now, I might keep it this way. One thing I did feel was that, you know, I might just get rid of the beast entirely and just, you know what, just give up on the window and just bring out Mirror Jade each time. So that's something that might change now post uh, regionals for me. Uh, but usually, so yeah, you're sending this and this. Uh, bring out the Lubellion and then a uh, Lubellion effect to bring these two back and summon out the window. And you can check out my previous deck profile, which actually has a combo line of video at the end there. Uh, and so, yeah, other than that, I think because window's not as... It's, it's strong, don't get me wrong. But again, just because of Dark Ruler, I might just cut this package out in terms of the beast. And then next, some generic hand traps, of course. Triple Ash, uh, pretty much guaranteed in most lists. Uh, the other new addition that's really popular right now is, of course, the DD Crew, mainly for tier elements, so you can try to stop their fusion plays from happening. But also, for example, against Sprite, you can banish that Ronin, or maybe you draw it as your six card, I don't know, and then you try to banish the Toad, assuming that they've already used up their uh, red. But it's a really, really good card right now, and I think a lot of lists are playing it, and you probably should be as well. Next, some generic uh, spells, Call by the Grave, which essentially serves as another way to stop the tier limit stuff happening on your turn. And, you know, stop sand traps, just so many things, like totally awesome. They're always going to attribute it to negate something. You could try to negate that with this, it's very strong. Uh, we're going to do double prosperity and double talents, just like before. Uh, I think the thing with this deck though, the extra deck gets really, really tight. So Pot of Prosperity, I only ever do uh, three at a time unless I'm really desperate. Then I would do 6, but knowing that my grind game is basically gone, because most of my invoked uh, fusion monsters get banished if I'm doing 6 of this. And then I'm main decking uh, Dark Ruler, which I sort of alluded to earlier, and I'm sure a lot of lists are doing this as well. I think this deck is actually sneakily good at going second, even before siding. And I really, I really like the aspect. Uh, because, for example, the LH card, the Golden Lord on the cells, like the send is really nice. And not only that, after you try to send, it can also try to bring it back at 3500 attack, which kind of forces out a negate a lot of times, because then that can just attack over whatever the negate thing monster is. And then, of course, the Deer Servant can ser serve as a going second card as well. And that's 
actually interesting in that point is that ultimate slayer sort of like a going second the deer servant uh you could certainly play that as well uh, i personally just figured you know what i might as well run dark ruler anyway so you know it's up to you i think it totally synergizes with this deck clearly with all the extra deck monsters that have some form of effects uh when hitting the grave there's a lot of those in this deck and then onto the traps, we're just running two imperms now just to make some space. Uh, this deck list is still uh, uh, at 50, which I like. And then the triple skill drain, which is nice once you have the Eldritch stuff. And of course, even Mirror Jade. I mean, you know, it's just a big body. Basically, the point of this is just have a big body on board, activate skill drain. Your opponent probably can't do too much, especially against Sprite. They really lose hard to skill drain. And I know because I'm playing Sprite myself right now. And so it's this is just super deadly against most decks. Alright, so let's just move on to the extra deck, which we of course have the Magistus Link and the Link Spider. This is just to get that Elich uh, Golden Land trap uh, into the grave so you can uh, banish for Sanguine at the end phase. Uh, we have the Lina and the Dark, which they honestly do come up. Um, this is really to get the Golden Lord into the grave so you can just bring it back at a high attack and also so that it's not, uh, it can't be destroyed by uh, card effects. And then the Dark, uh, that's really when you have Alistair on the field because that's our Dark. And you know what, you can have someone like my opponents like Mirror J with this and then I can resolve its effect because I also play Alba's stuff in the extra deck, so it's actually pretty fun to play this. Uh, Fusion, we're going to start with the Invocation stuff. Mecha Bell really is the primary one you're bringing out. This is the only one that actually will be coming out like every match. Uh, I really like a Goides because it's like just like that pop, especially under Meltdown where they can't respawn on the summon and the pop. Uh, and it can also beef itself up. Kaliga doesn't come up as often, but when it does, for example, it's when you, let's say, you normal Alistair, get the invocation, they use Shifter on you, then you can at least banish that Shifter and the Alistair to go into Kaliga, which they, if they don't have, like, Book of Moon or Imp I don't know, something like that, Dark Ruler, uh, if they don't have that, it is uh, hard for them to play through Kaliga, and they can't really attack over it because it does have 1800 defense. Uh, the other one is Purgatrio, which, for me, because I'm not playing All Mirage and the Secure Gardena package, uh, because you don't really need that, that's, especially, that's only really if you play the Maximus stuff. So, you can't automatically do it all the time it's essentially you have to rely on you or your opponent having ash in the grave for example which really isn't too too hard to ask for anyways because most people are playing ash and then we have the albion dragon which uh i've only actually i for some reason ended up having uh summoned this once uh in go for game but pretty much this never actually gets summoned uh this is really just to get sent off by dogmatic punishment or nadir servant just to add you some stuff uh the change from the previous list is i'm actually playing to Albion because uh, one, it could be sent with Mirror Jade or Nadir's Servant to add that brand infusion for the, uh, uh, at the end phase. And then, you know, I still need that other one so that in, in the case where I have to send the Golden Lord instead with the brand infusion rather than something like, you know, the Shadal Beast because it's like in late game situation, there's no need to bring out the window and I'm just bringing out Mirror Jade. That second one really actually did help. And of course, we need that Rebellion. Again, you can watch that deck profile uh, combo video that I posted uh, about a month or two ago. And then uh, the Mirror Jade, of course, really, really strong extra deck monster. And it's great because it can, you know, send that monster from the extra deck as part of the cost. So even under Dark Ruler, after, you know, that resolves, you can always uh, at least attempt to activate it just to get, you know, something like this or this into the grave so you can trigger their effects at the end phase. And of course, the window. Um, this is a card that is quite strong, but a lot of people are prepared for it. So just don't get too overconfident, I guess, once you bring this out. Um, they might be able to just uh, steamroll over it. And then the, uh, really, the staple Entis, just for that extra pop with the punishment so you can get multiple pops. And it's, I think, uh, it's a pretty tight extra deck. Like I said, with Prosperity, it gets rather tough. Uh, you know, some of the targets for Prosperity are like these. Uh, you have to decide between one of these two because you know, you do want to ha be able to get some kind of Elich stuff into the grave. And then uh, a lot of the invocation stuff like Purgatrio, Kaliga, those are other targets as well as the other branded uh, Albion Dragon as part of the prosperity cost. And then finally, on to the side, we have the Triple Solemn Judgment, mainly because you know that people are going to be siding back row hate against you pro side. Now, at the same time, sometimes, the reason I like this deck a lot is that it can be pretty difficult to side, because sometimes, you know, you have a lot of back row, but other times it might just be like Window, Mechaba, and like a couple of hand traps, which is hard to stop. And so, either way, you need the Solemn. Also, negating that first normal summon for Flunder is quite strong. Some more going first options is Anti-Spell Fragrance, which of course is strong against something like Banded Despia, but unfortunately against strategies like uh, Sprite and Tier Limits right now, it's actually not that good. But that's why I decided to add the D barriers as well. Uh, this card is so good. I just don't understand. Uh, I, I feel like it's going to get hit at some point. Uh, but, you know, really good against Tier Limits, Sprite, Branded Despia, Sword Soul, just a lot of key strategies. 
And then of course, go some going second options is the evenly matched. Uh, really, I mean, not much to say, especially when paired with Dark Ruler, this card is just so deadly. You could play Lightning Storm, but because this deck, it can OTK, but that's not the main strategy, of course. So I'd prefer to just break the board first. So evenly match is my preference with this deck in particular. We are siding Zombie deck, zombie World now. I was main decking this before and I really liked it. I've also cut the Necro World Banshee as well because I found that I was never really you know relying on that much especially like because basically that's something you send with brand infusion and so you know just this and terraforming you're just hard drawing it or relying on a hard drawing rather which is obviously not very high in terms of chances but you know what it's there if it if you draw it it's great if not then whatever you just move on with your other strategies and then I guess I should have shown this first was the Feather Duster paired with the Evenly I uh, just need some kind of back row removal the good thing with the Elich deck is that you know through whatever floodgates or whatever back row, it can actually grind quite well, right? I mean, Eldritch generally, they don't really care. And also that Eldritch sand effect serves as uh, additional back row removal on top of that Conquistador pop as well to pop floodgates if it's actually affecting you. So I find in terms of back row removal, that's why I'm only playing four in the side because inherently, especially with also, also Nadir Servant and the uh, Entis pop, it just has a lot of ways to get rid of back row on its own in the main deck, which is what I love. And then the three Gadarla, I uh, was pre previously I was playing two Gadarla, two Gamma Seal, just to have additional uh, Kaijus, but right now, you know, I'm focusing a little bit more on going first cards now post side. And Gadarla, the reason I'm choosing that, of course, is because of Flunder and their Wind Barrier statue. And before the Branded stuff came out, uh, the Gadarla's 2700 attack was a little bit too high, and I was playing Gamma Seals. But now, because of the Branded Fusion, and you know, it's easy to get either get Elich into the grave or Mirror Jade is just strong on its own, and so their 2700 attack really doesn't matter too much. Alright guys, so that was it for the deck profile. Hope you found that interesting and hope you want to try it out for yourself. And so that's it for me. Again, a big thanks to my Patreons as always. And well, take care guys.